looky here what came in the mail pretty fast shipping my gaskets as well as my reed valve so maybe I won't need uh, three part series on this uh, video I'm just gonna attach it to where I left off while I was waiting for the stator to come for my tractor I figured let me get this uh, Toro Recycler Personal Pace Lawnmower going. It's missing a gas cap as well as a carburetor. And I uh, have two Briggs carburetors, but they're not the ones with the auto choke. So this one has the air vane over here. So it needs a special carburetor with a little attachment where you can put the air vane on there, which I didn't have. So I just ordered one for uh, eight bucks, very cheap. So I guess I'll have to wait until that comes. And I guess I can find a gas cap somewhere. I think the other thing that Pete Lombardi told me was wrong with it was that it doesn't engage the, uh, the rear drive. So uh, we'll have to check that out when my carburetor comes. In the meantime, I've got uh, two of my snow blowers here. Just uh, the sun's out today, so it's uh, warming up the front part of the auger where there's a bunch of um, snow stuck in there. After that last storm, all that slush just built up in there and then it hardened when it got really cold. I couldn't get it out. So I'm just parking it in the, in the sun and having it melt on its own. That's what it's done too. Support the channel. Buy a sticker. Search eBay Mowers Blowers. You'll find both my stickers. Appreciate the support, guys. We'll put you on our tripod, get it all set up. While I was waiting, I cleaned the surfaces here for mounting, as well as the other two parts. the head and piston. I've cleaned the surfaces there. Sorry, here's the head. I've cleaned this a little bit better. So this little uh, o-ring type gasket was is uh, stretched out too much so it doesn't fit well around that loop it's too long so parts of it bumps up this is a joke anyway so I'm just gonna put some uh, RTV gasket maker and use this uh, pin thing and just seal that area right there the key is uh, painstakingly making sure that that ditch is completely covered with uh, gasket maker. And yet not making it too thick has to ruin the effectiveness of it just basically sealing. But I wanted to make sure that the canal in there is completely filled with uh, gasket maker, but yet not too thick, you know, where it sticks out and pushes the rest out. That little gasket is a little tiny gasket anyway. So I'm sure that this is going to be ample once it dries and cures a little bit. That looks pretty good. That'll be good enough. So what I could see is, this is the obvious gasket for this part here. I'm kind of surprised that uh, this is a Campbell Hausfeld set and not a Briggs. Briggs didn't even sell this, you know. I'm very surprised that it fits perfectly. So 
So I'm going to put the head on now. Or that part. Just hook the piston onto the crankshaft. Pushing down the cylinder and looking from the top to line up the holes. So it occurred to me that maybe it's not in the right direction. So I had to stop the video and go back to my first video and look and see how I removed it. This part here was the other way. So I gotta carefully pick this up. I'm gonna have to take the thing back off like that. It was the other way around. That's why you always take pictures, fellers. Just to make sure it's right. obvious gasket for that is this one. Now this comes with the new plate, right? But I don't want to remove this plate from that gasket because it, it's perfect. So I'm going to just take this off and put it on there. Just carefully remove this from that plate. Let's take a look at the bottom of it. Thank God it fits perfectly, you know? It's made for this one. I mean, I was gonna fabricate that flappy thing. I was gonna get like a piece of sheet metal and just like cut it and stuff. Using a screwdriver is always tricky because you wanna put force so that you don't strip it. <clears throat> That's it. <sighs> no, I guess I can Put the plate on. I just put the gasket onto this top head part here, and as I'm pushing down, the silicone gasket is seating. But a little bit of residue is coming out because I put too much, right? Which is expected. I don't want it to break off in the future after it hardens and get sucked somewhere and block something. So I'm gonna wipe off the uh, excess silicone. It's quite a bit after you push down on it, you know. So I wiped it clean. Looks pretty good. Now you're going to match this up because you see this is the input for the air input pipe. So it's got to go on that side, match up the V and the holes. Stick a 
bolt through here. And you move it around like this to make sure that the gasket moves around freely too. Move it around, make sure you've got the gasket. Do the opposite hole here. Move it around. Some resistance. I'm catching. I don't want to catch the gasket. Now you know you're pretty much home free if you can get the two corner ones in there which means that the gasket is seated through the holes correctly you don't see any protrusions on the side through the threads just fine because it is tightening down it doesn't tighten you mean it means that you probably caught the bolt on part of the gasket or something which is no good because then you'll rip the gasket it probably will still work because that gasket was pretty thick in width so it will seal the ends move it around a little bit more just to make sure that they're all freely moving and as you tighten the bolts, it moves less. Okay, and now we're going to secure this part here. You know, this really isn't very tough to do, you know? Alright, so I'm going to torque down these bolts. And as you guys saw, we gave it an oil change. We have the reed valves in place. We've got gasket on gaskets on this thing when this thing didn't come with any gaskets. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that the guy tried to fix it and didn't want to spend the money to buy the gaskets. And he's like, oh, the hell with it and just chucked it out. And then uh, whoever Pete Lombardi got it from is, uh, is how I have it here because Pete Lombardi gave it to me. I don't think Pete Lombardi ever tried this because, um, you know, he would have known it didn't work. You know, it didn't build up any pressure. But, uh, so this is what I have left. I've got this plate here in case that second valve goes bad. I'll put this plate back on. I didn't want to get the original plate off because I didn't want to break a perfectly uh, good gasket. The seal might have been perfect, you know. It's not really all that tough. And let's see. We also have... That stuff left over there. That's the gasket to this plate, right? Plus the reed valve for that and the two pins that hold that valve onto this plate, which is uh, there. These two holes here have a little pin that hold that straight gasket in place. So I'm going to just torque down. I'm going to torque this down. Torque it down on a cross pattern so that you evenly have it being tightened. What 
All right, fellas. Well, I just torqued them all down. I feel pretty good about it. It's got an oil change. We got new reed valves in there. We got new gaskets in there. <laughs> At least 80% uh, of it, uh, right? And I uh, guess all we got to do now is uh, start her up. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Is this thing going to work or what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to attach my new hose to it. Got my new hose from Campbell and Hausfeld. 25 foot, 3 8 inner. 3 8 is supposed to uh, take the um, air tools better, is what I've read. Uh, there, are, there is one quarter also. I believe the fittings are all the same. It's just the inner, the, uh, is it the inner diameter or outer diameter? Inner diameter is 3 eighths, meaning it's a little bit uh, wider for more airflow. You know what I mean? So uh, this thing should just plug right into that thing over there. Oh, well, I got you here. I want to thank uh, Josh Griffin of Griffin's Lawn Service for this awesome jacket, man. Is that an awesome jacket or what? Definitely very reflective. I don't know how I'm going to turn this whole thing on. It's going to take a while. I guess I just got to do it this way. <laughs> now on the other end of this thing, got one of these brass quick disconnect couplers is what they call them right if there are any leaks you put Teflon tape in between here but if there ain't no leaks don't put the tape so the main reason for me to want uh, a compressor is to power air tools so I've got this uh, half inch Craftsman impact wrench I got for $39 on eBay brand new it doesn't come with that, but I bought a kit where you put these things on. So this goes into the quick disconnect coupler that I just put on the hose. And this clips onto that. We should be good to try. So once you have that tightened on there with a the wrench, the idea is you can just pop it in there like that. And if it works, these are directions. Reverse, forward. Well, okay, so the only thing we got left to do now is to plug this mamma jamma in and see if uh, that kit makes this thing work. I uh, just plugged it into power. I'm so nervous every time. It's like if I fix an engine or something like that, I'm nervous about the first start. Here's like a first start, you know, so I'm just going to pull the on switch and see if it See if it builds up pressure. I hope it doesn't blow up and I die. Did I put the cowling back on? Ah, you know what? Let's see if it works first. filter on. Hey, hey, hey! It's past 60 now. Well, it stopped at 60. I take that back. It's at 70. It's at 80 now, getting close to 90 PSI. It should stop around the 125 area. It's 
building pressure to 90 right now. I'll put the shroud back on when it stops. At least I hope it stops. It should stop around 125 because that's what it's that's what it's rated to be, you know. It's at almost 100 now. It's reached 120. It's taken a while from it to go from 100 to 120. Probably about five minutes or so. I want to wait and see if it stops by itself, you know? I'm getting kind of nervous. It's at about 123. And uh, it's been running for about two minutes around there. It doesn't seem like it's building up any more pressure. Therefore, I don't think it's going to stop by itself, you know? I think I'm going to stop it on my own right now. Because I don't, I'm gonna, I don't want the engine to be too hot, you know? I can feel a little bit of leakage going on here. Hey guys, support my channel. Buy a sticker. Got the bumper sticker too. Thanks for watching guys. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Follow my Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website at MowersBlowers.com So I haven't screwed with that yet. I've been busy putting these things in. Check this out. This is the air hammer. Cool. I've been testing it so the pressure is all the way down to like uh, 60 now. It barely runs it because it's only 60 right now. See? It's almost done. Here's a cutting tool. So that's it. Those are my three tools that I got. And uh, they seem to work, you know, as long as the pressure's high. Had to use some Teflon tape to stop some leaks, but I, I think they all, they're always going to have a little bit of leakage, you know. <clears throat> I'll put the shroud back onto that thing. Just put the shroud back on. Just going to tighten this. And jam it on. I guess I'm just going to start it again and uh, try to build up some pressure. So I banged on that left gauge a little and then moved. So left gauge actually says about 128.30, you know, something like that. The right one says uh, almost 140, and it won't stop by itself. So I don't know what's up with that. Powers tools well, though. shut it off maybe there's like a factory preset settings that shouldn't be messed with you know but that, this doesn't seem very strong it doesn't seem as strong as let's say my uh, electric impact you know but it's good to know that I have this in case I need it you know what I mean this disc over here is broken so I'll have to get another three inch disc 
But, uh, you know, if I need to grind something fast and stuff, <coughs> this seems really strong. That'd be kind of useful. And this hammer here, this is really cool, man. I mean, I could, I mean, it seems like I could <laughs> drill holes in concrete. <laughs> and it only works when you put pressure on it, see? Oh, it does work. It's cool. Be easy to get the uh, wheels off of uh, rusted, uh, seized transaxles. For sure. But it's pretty cool, you know. I mean, I'm glad I, I got it working, you know what I mean? I've still got to kind of figure out, uh, you know, how to get it to shut off by itself. But I guess once you build up the pressure, and look, it's not leaking. I just used this, it was at 140. It's at, it's at 90 on this one here, but I don't know how accurate that one is, you know. And this is at 100, you know. It's not leaking. It's holding up the pressure pretty well. But uh, you know what, man? I only paid 20 bucks for the uh, kit, you know, and about 80 bucks for the tools and the hose, you know. It's pretty cool. It's good to know that I have it in case I need it. Um, I don't know how much I'm actually going to use it, you know, but uh, like I said, it's good to have. And if anything, I could sell it. But... Uh, you know, I will I will try to figure out why it doesn't stop by itself, you know. Any of you guys know, please, as always, man, comment. And you uh, new watchers, you know, if you watch my other videos, you'll see that I pretty much dabble in anything I get my hands on for free, you know. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'll fix it or try to fix it or learn about fixing it. And that's all. That's what it's all about is that, you know, I have, haven't had any experience fixing uh, air compressors and... Uh, for me to get this running and to power my air tools, my new air tools, is uh, pretty satisfying. Uh, thanks to a lot of you, the, my regulars, who comment on a regular basis. And uh, they, uh, they everybody has expertise in different fields. And uh, I'd like to know that, uh, you know, everything I get my hands on, I try to fix. And uh, from input from my subscribers, I learn how to do that, you know. So I want to be kind of well-rounded in, in every aspect of, uh, you know, a small engine repair. Uh, it's fascinating to me and uh, I find it very rewarding. But uh, anyway, this was a long video, but uh, it, it, I'm not going to do three parts. It's only two parts. So uh, thanks a lot for joining me on my uh, repair of this uh, Brutes 10 gallon 125 PSI air compressor. It just needed a reed valve and gaskets and uh, an oil change. And uh, it works well, you know, from what I could see so far. I'm not an expert, of course, in, the, in this field, but uh, to me, if I could power these three tools, man, uh, it's fantastic. I remember years ago, I did try to power it with that little thing, you know, the $99 uh, little cylindrical small air compressor. It wouldn't even turn anything on a power tool, you know. So uh, this is definitely working. The tools are working, and, and I could get use out of it. I question whether or not the impact is going to be strong enough, to, stronger than the electric impact that I have, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, uh, see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel. Buy a sticker. Got the bumper sticker too. Thanks for watching guys. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Follow my Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website at 